Would you like to control your garage door with Alexa? Would you like to use the Amazon key service and have your delivery safely put in your garage? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to do this using the MySmartQ garage door controller. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to control your garage door with the MyQ Smart Garage Controller. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Now here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's setting up the MyQ Smart Garage Controller. First, we're going to go over what it is, show you all the pieces, parts. Then we'll talk about setting it up. Then we'll get into work with Amazon Smart Key. And then if everything works out right, we'll also show you how to get it to integrate with Alexa so you can get it to your garage door to respond to voice commands. Well, if your existing garage door opener is working just fine, it's really hard to justify spending that money to get it upgraded to where you can either tie it into your smart home or to use Amazon's key delivery service, which is nice because that way Amazon and it's very controlled, can only open the door when they've got a delivery to make, and then they close the door, and you've got full record and everything else as to what's going on. So really can't complain about that one. So there's several pieces to the pie that need to show you. We'll switch over here, and this is the box you'll get from Amazon. Fairly nondescript. I mean, it's fairly compact. You Really, you can't complain a whole lot. So there's two pieces, as you can see by the outside of the box, that you're going to be setting up. The first is the smart controller. You need to put this near a power outlet and where it's going to be fairly close to the garage door, just in case. And this is going to initially be set up with Bluetooth but then it will program it for your 2.4. Remember, that's 2.4 gigahertz. It's not going to talk five. So you can see on the back, it's already set up for mounting bracket. I've just got mine Velcroed with some 3M command strips in case I want to move it. So that's all that really has to happen there. Then the part that does some of the magic is the actual sensor on the door. And this is what signals out to the MyQ smart hub or smart controller rather, whether the door is open or closed. This is Velcroed right up on the back. You're set to go. Now there's some information on the back, the serial number and the, the next box down to the left. It's the, I think the system name for it. And you want to grab the Mac address. This is some good documentation to have just in case you have to do any troubleshooting. So far, it's been working pretty well for me. Can't really complain, just to kind of help get you started. I did mention earlier, now that we've gone over the various pieces, parts, let's go ahead and get this up and running. I'm gonna switch over to my smartphone because that's really where you're gonna do some of this. So bear with me if the audio changes a little bit, because let's face it, smartphones don't exactly have the best recording audio. But anyway, let's get started. The first thing you wanna do in getting your MyQ controller ready, excuse the jerkiness, I'm hand holding the camera, is to find a place where you've got power, but it's fairly close to the garage door controller. Once you've got that done, then you're set for the next step and that's getting this configured. All right, well, this is where we're gonna mount this. I've already got the sticky strips on here and allow yourself some time for that one because those can be a little challenging to get off. So we've got that in place. Now we'll go back to the app and get the configuration started. Well, the first time you go into the MyQ app and you're gonna need the MyQ app, the Alexa app and the Amazon key. And we'll pop out here and show you that right now. So you've got the Amazon key app. You'll have to have that. And you'll have to have the MyQ app. I said three. Today is one of those days when I can't count. So we'll go back in here and it's automatically sensing that there's no device configured. So we will tap on the Smart Garage Hub. And since ours is white, there's two different models. Make sure you get to the one that says Control, not Hub. Otherwise, this is not going to work well. So we'll tap on the control. Yes, we've got access to the garage door. Yes, there's a strong Wi-Fi signal. And that's something you should check with your phone before you pick your final place for the MyQ controller. Know your Wi-Fi password. Ladder, maybe not so much. Depending on how tall you are, you can reach probably reach the garage door and hit the, the little training button. May or may not need the screwdriver with the drill. That's to drill the holes for the mounting plate. And that's an improvement they did make in this version of the Chamberlain MyQ is it does have a separate mounting plate. And then Bluetooth enabled, enable location services, and yes, Bluetooth is enabled. All right, so we'll say I'm ready. Okay, go to your garage, plug it into the outlet. Well, in my case, it's just outside the garage door. 
So we'll plug it in and the light's blinking blue and it already sees it and says connecting to device. Yes, we're going to pair with it because apparently it uses Bluetooth to do its initial configuration. We will tap on that and then we will put in the password. And click done and next. Okay, now it's going to configure this and watching the smart cue controller you see the light go blue light go on and off and you'll see the middle light which is looks like a red one i'm not sure what the one i've got start to blink now it says connected so that's good next and then we will all this you want to do right next to each other as far as the, the my cue sensors what we're going to work with next so it says pull out the tab and then next and we'll push and release the button i saw the red light come up next and we'll pair the controllers we'll pass it okay sorry press that again you heard the beep on the controller now it's paired and that's going to show us where to put it i've already had one before so i'm going to put it in the upper left hand corner and there's some sticky strips we're going to have to have which is fine and shows you where to put them all right well now this is when you need to know a little bit of information about your garage door controller but you probably already know this so we will click on lift master and say found it found my little button so we'll click on the red press and release do not hold it long because i've wiped out the config on mine once before now they're going to try to pair and the light blinked which is a good sign now you may have to do this more than once okay now it opened the door and that's a good sign sometimes i've had it have to do the training process several times because it doesn't always click right away just you know, let's face it, with electronics, stuff's going to happen. Next, okay, we're just going to say garage door. We're not going to do a second sensor, so it's nice to know you can do a second garage door. That's something I'll probably look at here at some point. So we'll click on next. And we've already got the garage hub mounted. And we'll just go through all these directions because I think you probably know how to do this already. All right, safety is important. Right, right, right. Okay. Now, it says garage door open, which says that since you put on, it's actually sensing because it's now instead of being up and down, it's face forward. So we'll tap it. And when you're doing this from the MyQ app, you're gonna, you're hearing this in the background, the light starts flashing and you hear the beeping. That's to let anybody know they're in the garage door, it's fixing to come down. That's it, you're done with this part of it. Don't be immediately concerned if you do not see the garage door status changed within a second or two of the garage door coming down. It sometimes it will do it right away sometimes it may take it about a minute to realize that it's down but other than that that's about the only probably surprise you should expect out of this and i would encourage you to cycle it several times up and down up and down or open close whatever terms you want to use to make sure that everything is working right anytime you have a power outage double check this to make sure it has reassociated with your access point the least you'll have to do is you may have to power down the smart controller and power it back up. Worst case, you have to wipe the config and start over. But that's, you know, that's the worst case. So far, I've not experienced that with this new version. The older black model could have a little bit of an attitude at times. Well, now that we've got the basic operation up and running, we want to get to the part that you've been waiting for, and that's getting us to work with the Amazon key delivery. So you'll tap on works with, and key by Amazon and we'll launch and so it will go into the Amazon app we will tell it to add garage door we are going to add a garage door it senses that it's already there so we're good there and we'll tap next and that's it now it may take Amazon a little while before you start seeing this show up in your deliveries so other than that you know it should work pretty much it should be working and amazon should know about it well before a delivery arrives and like i said earlier if you've had a power outage cycle it to make sure it's okay because i have had amazon have problems getting into the garage after there's been a power failure so hopefully this new controller won't have the issues that the original uh, black colored smart hub did.
but that's how you get that one up and running. Now, I mentioned early in the video that we were going to look at integrating this into Amazon Alexa. And it's one of those proverbial, yeah, but. When I did the initial look at this, everything seemed to be there, looked all right. Well, for some reason, and I've not been able to get a good explanation, the Amazon skill that would natively talk to this has been withdrawn. It's still present when you go into the Amazon skills page, but it says something between uh, temperate unavailable or withdrawn and not really seeing a good explanation. So there are a couple of other options out there. One is using IFTTT, which is an option. My concern there, having dealt with IFTTT, that adds some additional leg edit that adds some additional lag or delay to the process because first it's got a sense something's going on. IFTT has to pick up on it. Then it has to send to Amazon. So there's a little bit more of a lag than I'm happy with. Now, your mileage can vary. You might have fantastic results. Mine's been kind of hit or miss. So just think, think about that if you want to really tie it into Alexa. Besides, the smartphone app is great. I've not had a problem with it. There is a, another third-party option out there. But again, it's back into that process of doing, you know, you, you've got additional piece of the puzzle. You've got more troubleshooting to do. So do you really want to do it? And that's the question that's going to be best left up to you. My main purpose was to get this at least closer to being tied into my smart home. I am going to look at getting this connected into Home Assistant. Also to see if there is a way that we can, you know, look at fleshing out how to get IFTTT to work better. And also look to see with the various options that are in the MyQ app as to which ones might present a an acceptable option. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the ones you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.